Zen, if you would uh, kick us off for our final session of the day before Mark wrap, uh, Mark and I wrap up uh, at the end, but I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, what you've been doing at Kaiser and, uh, and uh, how others could learn from you as well. All right. Well, thank you for the kind introduction. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Xin Shu. Um, I'm from the Kaiser IT's security team. Um, my, well, apparently today's last presentation is talking about how we use the, the Nexus IQ and component and firewall capabilities that's, you know, outside of your typical DevOps uh, pipeline, uh, you know, beyond that and really at the very early stage of the life cycle. Um, but before I get into that uh, presentation, just a um, few words about Kaiser Permanente. Some of you may not be uh, very familiar with it. Um, Kaiser Permanente obviously is a healthcare organization. Uh, currently, we have about 12.2 million people that gets um, care and coverage from Kaiser Permanente. Um, we have a little bit over 200,000 employees. We have uh, 22,000 physicians, 58,000 nurses. Um, Kaiser Permanente has been consistently ranked as one of the top healthcare providers for many years. Um, in 2017, Kaiser Foundation House Plan and Kaiser Foundation Hospital. This combined operating revenue was uh, $72.7 billion. So as you can tell, Kaiser is, uh, it's a, a really large size organization. And we have a large number of employees with very, very different diverse backgrounds. So now let's go back to the uh, the presentation. Um, this is a simple illustration of, you know, many of us how we are uh, a, a, a typical use of, you know, Nexus IQ and repositories um, in the DevOps pipeline, right? So on the left hand side, you have say a, a Maven based uh, build process, right? In building an application, uh, Maven requests a, a library because the application specified that's a dependency for it. So Maven makes a request to the proxy repository of library A and proxy repository at that point may not already have library A yet. So it turns around and asks the library A from a, a remote host repository. In many cases, you probably set it up such that that's uh, Maven Central. You get the library A, and then the uh, proxy repository through firewall capabilities um, sent the, asks the Nexus IQ to really run the policy evaluations against library A. Now, if the evaluation result, everything comes back with as good, then the repository um, returns library A to Maven. And in that case, Maven build process moves on to the next step of the, build, of the building the application. Similarly, um, if Maven build, let's say, uh, requests another library B, but this time the uh, policy evaluation in Nexus IQ indicates um, library B is no good. It violates uh, one or several policies, possibly say for due to security um, vulnerabilities or licensing terms. And, and if you configure your, your Nexus IQ policies to fail in such conditions, um, your proxy repository will then not serve the library B. Instead, it will tell Maven basically that 
the component it requests it has been quarantined, for example. And in that case, your, your Maven build will fail. All that is really great. Uh, within Kaiser Permanente, we have been making extensive use. We have obviously, as a, such a huge organization, we have very large number of applications uh, being uh, deployed, being developed, uh, being tested at any given time. Uh, we, make, we make extensive uses of Nexus IQ through the uh, DevOps pipeline to uh, analyze all the open source components being used by a particular application. And uh, depending on the, the outcome of that analysis, uh, we notify the development teams about um, vulnerable components and work with them to, to remediate those kind of issues. This is all great. And like I said, we make extensive use of that capability. But we also found out that uh, in many cases, if that's the only thing you do, um, you, you have this problem in the sense that, hey, you, you know, I wrote my code. And then now we run through this. And security team tells me you have some problems because certain open source component you're using is vulnerable, but um, I'm not going to be able to really fix it anytime soon now because I, I already wrote most of my code or I already finished writing my code. Um, we're going to have to find a time and, and possibly funding and budget uh, for the next release or sometime down the road to be able to uh, address the secu possible security problems, for example. Right. Um, we also have, like I said, large number of employees coming from very diverse background. Some of them, uh, and actually most of them, don't have any programming uh, expertise, right? They they are not going to be able to know what is a DevOps pipeline. Uh, they don't. They don't know how to uh, even log into Nexus IQ and search the uh, applications and look for the uh, vulnerabilities. But some of our employees do have that need to be able to uh, make really use of that capability that's in Nexus IQ, right? Obviously, open source component vulnerabilities, uh, licensing turns, um, but they're not that technical in the sense of they're not programmers. And asking them to use Nexus IQ as is or through the pipelines to, to be able to leverage that kind of uh, data and capability in Nexus IQ is really, really challenging. So those were some of the drivers that led us to develop this, this simple little tool um, that's inspired by this, this um, general process. And here is the, uh, the very simple little tool that we developed. Um, before I get uh, further deep, let me just also uh, explain a few things. Kaiser, uh, as an internal as company policies, we are we are very very careful to not uh, give the appearance that we are endorsing any specific commercial products. So you probably have some of you may have noticed right. Um, on the slides, I do not have any word about any particular products uh, written down. This is part of the company policy that we, we do not want to even give the appearance of endorsing any specific product. And also because of that kind of reason, uh, I'm not allowed to give you any live demo 
Uh, so what I did is I did some screen capture and put it on the slides. And before I was able to make this presentation, I had to have the slides submitted for internal review. And as part of that internal review, I had to um, actually specially produce a version of the tool that's that's heavily uh, a stripped down version. So it doesn't have anything that might, again, give the appearance that we are endorsing some products in some public forum. So what you're seeing is we, we do have the actual tool uh, in production. But what you are seeing here in the slides are a specially built, stripped up version of the tool. OK. So, so like I said, it's a very simple tool. Um, what for us, the, the main driver was that we want people to be able to leverage what's the capabilities and the very useful data that's in Nexus IQ, but without having to really have much uh, training because the most of our employees absolutely have no programming background, right? And yet some of them do actually uh, need to be able to benefit from the capability of Nexus IQ. So what inspired us is that, well, everybody at least uh, knows how to use a computer and knows how to do kind of search. So we said, let's, let's create a sort of a, a search-based uh, a tool that leverages some of that capability and exposes some of the capability of Nexus IQ. So, you know, a user comes to this tool, the first page is, is just this search field. This is, in this case, I'm showing the uh, Maven format kind of uh, component search. So you give them the, you enter the group ID, artifact ID, and version, and you click the search button. It, it will take you, well, actually, let me go back to this slide. So at that point, when you hit the search button, that that information, the, the component information is sent to the, uh, to the to that web server, uh, web application. And the application, what it does is it, it mimics like a Maven process in that case. So it turns around, sends, a, a requ HTTP request to the uh, to the proxy repository, saying, "Hey, I need I need to get this particular component, and here's the information about the component." And then the the proxy repository goes through the the motion, gets the component, goes through the Nexus IQ evaluation of the policies on that on that component, and returns and returns it back to the application. So at that point, the application knows, OK, so we found that component. We know now that component is in that repository, uh, proxy repository. And then we tell the end user, say, OK, so what you were looking for, we, we have found it. And all the details that you're looking for is available on this page. Again, this is a heavily stripped down version of the actual page. Uh, in the actual page, we have a lot of more contents that mostly are sort of uh, documentation, educational uh, purpose to basically prepare any kind of user, whether they have any prior knowledge of Nexus IQ or not, to, to know once you get onto this page, next page, what they're going to see and how are they going to be able to properly interpret the information that's going to be presented to them. Right. And once they click that link, this is the kind of page they will, uh, they will be taken to. And many of you probably are very uh, familiar with uh, this kind of uh, uh, UI. It's it's basically a 
a report page from Nexus IQ. Um, it's, it's slightly different in the sense that this is a report page for a proxy repository on Nexus IQ versus most of the time, obviously, on Nexus IQ, you probably have lots and lots of applications. And for each application, you may have uh, you know, many reports over the time, right? But it's it's other, otherwise it's very similar to your regular application report in Nexus IQ. It shows you all the components that's in that repository, and obviously you can you can quickly find the specific component you are looking for by type the partial name of the component, and then once you get there, you can. Click that specific component uh, of a specific version, and then you will be presented with the familiar Nexus IQ uh, details about that component, uh, right? With what are the possible security vulnerabilities, security alerts that, according to the policy, you have defined it, uh, what are the uh, licensing alerts, uh, and if there are any security vulnerabilities, what's the vulnerability details, and so on and so forth. Right. So that's, again, like I said, it was a, a very simple little tool that, that because of some of the real life use cases we have encountered that inspire us to create this tool. Um, we, we have rolled out this tool only very recently. Um, we think it has been really useful to not, not only the, the uh, people that we originally thought that's going to be uh, really interested in this, and those were the people who don't necessarily have much programming background, but it also somewhat surprisingly, it also turned out that many of our developers also really like this tool in the sense that um, you know, many of our developers, they, they are obviously very busy most of the time with their, uh, with their deliverables and schedules and deadlines. And when they finally get to a, a, a situation where, for example, an architect or a lead developer says, hey, you know, a security team, I worked with you guys last time for this uh, previous application, and we went through the pipeline stuff, and you know, as part of the pipeline, um, Nexus uh, IQ based scanning was integrated, and we got really useful information. Um, now we are about to start a new application. Our team is uh, being given uh, this new requirements to, to start uh, developing a new application, and because of our uh, kind of prior experience, we felt that we have some ideas that what kind of uh, frameworks we were thinking of using. And therefore, we also have kind of a list of maybe some kind of, uh, what kind of open source libraries we might be need to use. Um, it would be nice, actually, you know, when we are doing brainstorming to be able to really quickly, right? Like a few seconds to be able to find out, hey, that particular open source library we're, we're thinking maybe we need to use. Um, is it is it you know kind of good enough in the sense that we may know, yeah, it does have the kind of functionality we are looking for, but is it good from the open source license licensing perspective? Uh, is it good from security perspective? Is it, does it have vulnerabilities? And instead of, you know, even for develop, instead of me going into my IDE, set up a dummy project, and, and then run through the Nexus uh, scannings to see if the library is, uh, is it good or not? You know, when I'm doing whiteboarding, it would be nice to have somebody just quickly typing the information in you know, in a few seconds and get the answer on, okay, that library, it looks clean or it looks really bad from a security perspective. 
maybe we should think of uh, looking at some alternatives, right? So it was it was a little bit surprising to us that a lot of the developers e uh, even liked this uh, little tool, even though they, for some of them, they do have the capability of obviously access Nexus IQ through either you know directly going to Nexus IQ logging in or uh, using their IDE plugins. Uh, we also had other kind of users, uh, notably uh, enterprise architecture uh, peoples who one of their responsibility was as a custodian to uh, some of the enterprise standards, uh, technologies and products sometimes. And one of their uh, long running headache has been um, they, they wanted to be able to uh, quote unquote, uh, recommend and endorse certain frameworks. And along with that, uh, they always get asked about, well, for this framework, for there are those open source libraries. Uh, are, you, are, you, are you okay? Are you approving us to use that particular version? And they always had a problem trying to maintain that kind of list. Um, so when we talked to the enterprise architecture team about, hey, this, this little tool with this kind of uh, capacity, they really love the idea. They basically said, yes, we wanted this as also now embedded in, into their own set of tools uh, when it comes to what is the enterprise architecture team's um, recommendation when it comes to open source library, specific open source library, because there are literally hundreds of thousands of them and there's no way for them to be able to keep up with the, with the change every day. So, so they're now using this tool to, as part of the, when somebody comes to, to the architecture team and say, what about these set of libraries? What's your recommendation? They have, in their overall recognition, they, one of the things they basically tell the customer is, you, you should use this tool, look for uh, what the current security status is and what the current licensing um, condition is and make sure that they are appropriate for your particular application or usage of those components. So, um, this is, a, this is the light, last presentation of the day. So I'm basically done. If you have any questions, you can keep on. Jen, Mark, and Derek here. Wonderful presentation. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Derek and I were just sitting here talking about how powerful uh, how powerful the solution is that you provided to your team there as far as planning goes. Yeah. I, I, it was uh, it's fascinating to hear that you know from the presentation that you gave a lot of the presentations today that were focused on our products that use IQ server you know especially uh, Nexus lifecycle the integration points we've heard are inside the IDE or inside the Jenkins or Bamboo you know build servers uh, or integration servers and you know the concept that you talk. Uh, you talked about was the furthest left <laughs> yeah. we've heard people shift yeah. uh you know it, what some people call devsecops and you, you didn't want to label this as a you know a devops practice but it was really you know how do we shift security left to the furthest point left of design where you've built this web application to surface the information for developers and you know even as you built it for security professionals to use that the developers were saying in the whiteboard stage of design yeah. Yeah. let us use this before we've even started coding before we're in the ide and i think that's something that's really exciting to hear is how early can you take automated security where the automation is really the lookup of the vulnerability information or license information, what have you about that, and present it to people in you know in that phase of the life cycle, and saving them a heck of a lot of rework down the road. No yeah. developer yeah. wants to use that bad component <laughs> if they found out through your web app that it was bad. It's like, well, what?
what what alternative version can I use? And let's start with that and save us a lot of headache or back and forth with the security team, right? It's such a simple idea, Jen, that it's it's brilliant in its simplicity. Yeah, I agree. We uh, obviously everybody talks about yeah, we need to shift to the left, and there's no no exception here at the Kaiser Permanente. The epic the security team always talks about what are the ways to really shift left because you know I don't know about the other uh, other companies out there, but in Kaiser we know once a project team started their funding obviously has been allocated they they have a set of deliverables um they they are trying to meet their schedule their budget and if by the time they are mostly done with their coding and then you tell them saying you know you need to you have some problems it it usually is a a pretty hot discussion at that point saying we how, how do we fix it because they may not have the time or money in that iteration to fix it anymore, right? So everybody wants to, you know, let me know if I'm trying to use this thing and you say it's really not good. It, it, it's tremendous help to know that beforehand, before they commit, before they start spending the effort to write the code against that component. How and, hard was it to build that solution? Like I said, it looks simple, I mean, you just hook up a simple web page to the back end. Is it that simple? Um, it's it's almost that simple. Well, but since we have uh, done this first iteration, we we are thinking of some one of the biggest uh, uh, area of improvement is that asking some of the users to say, hey, give me that uh, group ID, artifact ID, and version. Uh, is really challenging. There are like some of the users, obviously. I don't really have much clue what that is about, right? Um, so, so we're we're going to uh, make some significant uh, usability improvement. Instead of asking them to provide the precise information of a component, we can we can uh, we wanted them to be able to really just enter whatever you have heard. The, was the name of the component. It, it could be even be partial. Mm -hmm. the, all the possible matching, and they go through that list and say, ah, this is the actual one. Uh, I see I may even have, you know, misheard what the, the library was really about. Click that, and then we take care of the rest. Um, we also have uh, end users who, like I said, don't have any real programming background, but for example, some of the intellectual properties uh, people that they really love to be able to make use of the uh, licensing information from Nexus IQ. Yeah, wonderful, um, yeah. beautiful idea. Congratulations. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great story. It's a great wrap up to the uh, the day yeah. as well, because, uh, you know, it's it's one of these kind of, you know, you save the best for last and, and a simple concept that delivers a lot of value, uh, especially for your organization and the scale of your organization too for, uh, and, and you know, I think the simplicity uh, as well by plays into the simplicity of the buy-in for the organization. Right, right. It's not a tough tool to use. There are three fields there that you need to <laughs> fill out. So, yes. <laughs> right. So, All right. Well, thank you so much. Are you going to be able to jump into the Slack channel for a couple minutes and answer some questions? Uh, sure, yeah. That would be great. And then while you're there, please upload your slide deck. People will be looking for that. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Very, very uh, – we'll be talking again, believe me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was very cool. Thank you.